Dr. Michael Yi is a senior biotech analyst at the firm and joins us now. Michael, great to have you with us. We've been talking about um, some bigger dynamics in the market, which theoretically could benefit biotech. That is, you know, rotation into value, uh, declining interest rates next year. Is that going to be enough? Because we, we thought that maybe there were times when M&A seemed to make sense, and yet it never benefited biotech. Well, it's great to be here. I think there are two positive tailwinds. The first is, particularly for the small and mid-cap biotechs or the XBI, you guys pull up that chart, that has been a big dog for three years. We finally get a little move here over the past six weeks, and I think it's the early cycle of a forward-looking uh, easing rate environment, and I think that that is going to be a positive tailwind and certainly one of the sectors that should be a beneficiary if you think about long-duration interest rate-sensitive areas. Uh, cash flow biotechs are one. The second positive tailwind, which we had a note out today, I think you mentioned it, and we saw it right here today, is more M&A. You've got over $100 billion of cash sitting at Big Pharma. You had Bristol deploying 14 today. Pfizer's got to do more, et cetera, et cetera. And with all these stocks beaten down, I think you see valuations attractive. I think that's another positive tailwind going into 24. What are some of the themes in terms of, uh, you know, what is going to drive M&A? This was a neurosciences deal. Neurosciences is one of the fastest growing areas within uh, pharma in general. About 9 percent, I think, globally a year is the growth there. Um, but also weight loss, I would imagine. What are some of the other things that we should be looking for? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, theme number one certainly is in the obesity metabolic space. There were two two billion dollar deals just in the past month, Roche and AstraZeneca buying some obesity uh, early stage assets. I think you're going to see more of that. Scholar Rock, SRRK, is one of the ones. Take a look at that one that has room to run this year. I think in oncology, certainly still a big place to be Immunicor, IMCR. That was one we listed in our table as well. And I think you're right, CNS Neurology. Sarah Bell was taken out last week. Prothena, PRTA. Another one, if the data in Alzheimer's are good. Uh, but if the Alzheimer's data is good coming up, I think that's one to watch as well. they got a partnership with Bristol. Which are the big pharmas uh, that will be most pressured to do the deals? Obviously, the ones that are facing patent cliffs, and it seems like almost all of them are at this point. <clears throat> well, I think there's two things. Remember, one is, yes, the patent cliffs. And I think uh, both Merck and Bristol, and certainly, again, I know Pfizer's done a deal, but Gilead, another one that I think we want to see doing more deals, is one, but let's not forget IRA. IRA is the first year here where price negotiations are going to start. We're going to hear about this in February. We do think biotech probably takes a little bit of a pause. I think it's a little bit overbought, but goes higher. And I think IRA is certainly going to be on the minds of people. We got price negotiation. We got prices coming down 20, 30 percent. They need to do more deals. There's a whole theme about why small and mid cap has to be taken out over the next year or two. Hey, Michael, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. We know what GLP meant for the pharma space in 2023. What, what, is, that, uh, what is that area of 24 that you think is going to be that new area that really is pushing up valuations and multiples? Is there anything? Is it Alzheimer's? Is it more GLP? Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Look, I think GLP and obesity is a once in a generation type thing. I mean, guys, if it was uh, all uh, uh, obesity now, maybe you talked about hep C, which was just about 10 years ago, and probably statins a decade before that. Uh, so these are the big classes. And I think what's important is that these cycles don't end in a year. You know, you talked about how 2023 was GLP. I don't think that ends in a year. I think you still see that as an important driver for Lilly, which is continuing to be a winner. I think people want to continue to own stuff like that. Astra, Roche. Others, Amgen, let me call out my favorite large cap stock because they're in a phase two for a big obesity drug with data in 2024. That's a monthly, not a weekly like Lilly. So check that one out. And I think you're going to see this play out over the next year or two. Um, neurology, I think, still continues to be. Alzheimer's going to take some time to open up. But that is a huge untapped area. We're continuing to see uh, uh, M&A there. That is a huge global epidemic that needs to be addressed. Yeah, I mean, the calendar of, uh, in terms of data readouts for trials related to GLP-1s for treatments of various diseases, it's really nonstop uh, next year. But in terms of Amgen, um, that key data is going to be due out in the second half of the year. So when do you want to start owning it? That's great. Look, it's funny because everybody on Wall Street knows if you've been following Amgen and they've been saying that their big data for the once a month injectable is at the end of 24. So everybody comes to me and says, Mike, 
Why do I have to buy this stock today? Well, if everybody knows it's end of 24, then maybe it's by summer. Uh, so, uh, or, or if it's the stock to own for 24 in large cap biotech because of this obesity angle, then maybe you will just start buying it at the beginning of the year. So I'm a buyer on the dips if we do have a pullback here at the beginning of the year for biotech. Uh, but I think that's one to watch because I don't think the obesity story ends this year.